All right, if everyone will please have a seat. And we're going to start the docket at nine. And let me tell you all what the order of things will be. We are actually doing closing arguments in a jury trial. So that will occur as soon as the attorneys are ready. We will be having jury selection for our next trial. Have no fear, attorneys, that will take place and that's gonna take place uh, most likely in the courtroom next door. So because we are currently in a trial, that doesn't exclude us from going to another trial as well. I try to give people their trials when they want their trials. Uh, today is Monday. Uh, do you have Monday's docket, please? All right, thank you. So it's a new day, new beginnings. Everybody complained about how cold it was in San Antonio. Now they say we're gonna skip spring completely and go straight into 90 degree weather. So there should not be any complaints for the people who thought it was too cold. But other than that, it's going to be a great day. It's Monday. It's new beginnings. When I call your name, you need to let me know you are here. If you do not stand when I call your name and answer, a warrant may be issued for your arrest. Juan Arambola. Your hat, sir. Alfred Flores. Good morning, Judge. He's outside with Tom. I'm told him to come inside. He's outside where? The hallway with Tom walking through the door as we speak. All right, Alfred Flores. With counsel, Judge. All right, where are you, Mr. Flores? Elazar Alejandro. Here you are, counsel. Nathaniel Villalobos. Here you are, where are you at? Please stand when you hear your name. Where are you at, Mr. Villalobos? Right here. Have a seat. And custody is Fabian Ramirez. Richard Flores Murray. Richard Flores Murray. Thank you. Rudo Apardo, custody. Patrick Jenkins. Patrick Nathaniel Jenkins. <coughs> All right, but where is he? Oh, I think he's online. Victor De La Vega. Tomas Hernandez. All right, Ernest Mora is supposed to be by Zoom. Marcelano Padilla, custody. Michael Perez. Dana Waters. Dana Michelle Waters. And custody is Oscar Alvera, Cristina Rios. I'm appearing for Mr. Sandoval on her. We'll confer. She's in custody. All right. Blas Hernandez. Aldo Salas, Renee Torres, Renee Torres, Joshua Kilgore, custody, Willie Cunningham, President of Council, Judge. Thank you, Claudia Aaron, Terrell Gidry, Terrell Gidry. In custody is Jerry Banda, Anthony Warrington, Shannon McRae, Robert Caroline, Johnny Joe Webb, Johnny Joe Webb, Jeremy Tapia, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yari Yari custody, yeah. Daniel Martinez, Daniel Martinez, Michael Castro, Michael Castro, Baron Staten, Baron Staten. Anyone whose name was not called or you came in late, we'll start over here. Yes, what's your name? Stan, what's your name? I'm sorry, last name? Okay, best. All right, do you know who your attorney is? Do you have a case number or SID number? 575760. 575760? 
All right, just have a seat. We'll get with you. Anyone over here? All right, these are the rules of the court. People wonder why I, I repeat these rules all the time. It's because people don't remember or people don't listen. So these are the rules. Follow these instructions very carefully. Number one, we're going to start with the jury trial. So as soon as their client is here and we go over the jury charge, that's what's happening. Number two, please don't tell me you need to be in Comal County, Travis County, wherever it is for some county court, because this is a district court. The criminal trial division, they will give you their files. Their files are there. Family violence, they have their files. Just grab your file, review it. Everyone is required to, to confer with the state and confer with your client. If your client is in custody, ask that they're brought out. There may be some issues with that as we're starting a jury trial, but they will work with you. Do not approach the court unless you have conferred with the state and conferred with your client. Court reporter is here. Do not touch her items. Do not lean on her desk. Do not touch her equipment. If you do that and if you damage it, you will have bought it and it's over $10,000. In the back is going to be probation. If you have somebody who's on probation, please confer with the probation officer. They're just not here just to be here. Confer with them. If you have an inmate, let the deputy know that you have an inmate. Once you request that inmate, do not leave the courtroom because there's a limited number of inmates that are allowed out for security reasons. If your client wishes to communicate in a language other than English, whether you speak the language or not, we will need an interpreter. Before you tell the clerk that you are ready, request the interpreter. All right, it's gonna be busy today. I'm just gonna put it in the universe because it's true. It's gonna be hectic today. And I think when you let people know how the day is gonna go, everybody will be more patient. So everyone, put some patience in your pocket, a smile on your face. It is Monday. We all thought we would be retired. We are not. And I appreciate the fact that all the attorneys are in suits and ties instead of jerseys. So everyone, please confer. And as soon as your client comes out, we'll go over the charge. No, it's going to take a while because they're just telling me about this issue with the charge. So they're going to have to put something maybe in the charge.
All right, so please be seated. And let me say this, we were here on Friday. We were staying till Friday till the jury charge was done. Everyone said the charge was done. And now we're here with no, the charge is not done. So let me explain something to parties. When I have the jury in the back and I tell them to be here at 9 a.m., they're all here at 9 a.m. They're expecting to be sitting in this box at 9 a.m. listening to closing arguments. All parties have my email address. If there was an issue that was discovered with the jury charge, you all should have brought it to my attention. All of you have my phone number. You could have called because everybody knows the jury is here at 9 and they are expecting to proceed at 9 a.m. And now we're not proceeding at 9 a.m. And guess what? That throws everybody's schedule off. So next time, and for future references, for parties who are in jury trial with this court, all of the attorneys always have my cell number and always have my email number where people could have just emailed everybody in the group and said, we have an issue with the jury charge. So now we're not going to start at nine. We probably won't start till 9.30 or 9.45. And the jury will have to be instructed. I'm sorry, we're starting at 9.30 or 9.45 until nine. Of course, I won't blame that on anyone here, but that's where we are. So I will hear the issues that people have with the charge. Defense. Well, Your Honor, we're asking for this instruction due to- Oh, you can remain seated. It makes it easy for the court reporter to hear. So we are asking for the instructions to come in point under 9.04. I've been looking at the state's case of Fandy State, and it does come with the express limitation that it- Excuse me, counsel. Just slow down a little bit. That it applies when the actor's purpose is limited to create an apprehension. In this particular case, Your Honor, that is part of the issue that we are trying to argue for the jury to decide. Therefore, we do believe that we are entitled to this instruction if the state is going to allude or reference that our client brought out the knife and that his intent was to cause the murder in this case, Judge. All right. And so what specifically are you asking for in the jury charge? would just be asking that the court put into the charge language that tracks section 904, which we, uh, reads as threats is a just justifiable force. The threat of force is justified when the use of force is justified by this chapter. For purposes of this section, a threat to cause death or serious bodily injury by the production of a weapon or otherwise, as long as the actor's purpose is limited to creating apprehension that he will use deadly force if necessary, does not constitute the use of deadly force. All right, state. Your Honor, section 904 applies only in cases in which the defendant is creating an apprehension that he will use deadly force if necessary and not in cases where the defendant intends to cause or actually does cause serious bodily injury or death. That's from FAM versus State, 639 Southwest 3rd, 708. Furthermore, and probably more specifically, Your Honor, in Gamino versus State, 537 Southwest 3rd, 507, 904 applies only when deadly force is not used. Defense? Judge, I- Have you reviewed the case that the state is- I, I haven't re reviewed that one because they just now are citing it. All case. right, so I'll give you a chance to re review that case. Uh, so just have a seat, I'll let you review that. We're off the record. All right, Mr. Lott, who is your client? There, uh, yeah, your, uh, your Honor, my, my client my is Patrick, Patrick Jenkins. Jenkins. All right, where is Mr. Jenkins? I believe he has logged on to the Zoom. I'm here, Your Honor. All right, you're listed as Christian Ellenwood. Oh, yes, this is my uh, wife's computer. All right. Um, Patrick Jenkins, what is happening with this case? It's a, today is plea deadline date? Yes, Your Honor, uh, if I may. He has been accepted to the pretrial diversion program. 
he has uh, submitted his paperwork and I believe is scheduled for an orientation. All right. So we're going to reset this. Let me just look at the calendar very quick. We're going to recall this for March 25th. And you're excused. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. And your client can appear by Zoom on that date. Thank you, Judge. Have Thank a good you. day. Have a good day, Judge. All right. Thank you. You too. Uh, Mr. Garcia, who are you here for? Judge, I, ha I have two this morning. Uh, one is in person and one you're allowed to appear by Zoom. Uh, Ernest Mora. Can I see the um, file on Ernest Mora, please? And Mr. Mora, next time you appear, you're not allowed to have that rag on your head. Do you understand? Thank you. All right, what's happening with this case? Judge, you're still awaiting indictment on the DWI case. Okay. He has been indicted on one of uh, the other case, but we're awaiting indictment on the uh, other, the DWI. State, do you have an idea when that will occur? Let me look it up real quick. And is it, a, um, I'm assuming it's just a plain DWI third counsel? Yeah, it is, Your Honor. Has the same offense date as the uh, possession case, Judge. So let, let me email the um, the intake attorney and see where we are on that, Judge. All right, we're going to come back on March 25th, and your client is allowed to appear by Zoom. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Moore, you're excused. <clears throat> and who is your next client, Counsel? Tomas Hernandez, Your Honor. He is present. All right, could I see the file on Tomas Hernandez? Tomas Hernandez, come forward. You were on time for court. Right. <laughs> All right, State, what is happening with this case? I think we've made an offer, Judge, and I think uh, defense has asked for a, a trial date. All right, are you That's requesting cool. trial? Yes, Your Honor. Which date are you all? Uh... All right. All right, we're gonna recall this back on March 11th. I'm gonna give you a reset for me. Could you have a coordinator come down, please? Your trial will most definitely, uh, will most likely take place on the 12th, but I'm gonna recall you back on March 11th. And you may be in impact court. What is that? Uh, impact court is on the second floor. I go to bed. Oh, well, I mean, anytime you're not before me is probably a bad idea, but, you know. No, uh, whoever that judge will be, that judge will be fair as well. Right. And I'm going to give you the reset form to sign. And once you sign it, you are excused. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thanks, Eddie, you're excused. Okay, Judge, thank you. Have Take a great a day. Bye. All right, you too. All right, thank you.
All right, are y'all ready for your argument? Yes, we are, Judge. All right, we're back on the record in 2021, CR 11795. You may proceed. So with regard to the Gamino case, Judge, um, if, if the court would like to look at that, that is a case where actually the Court of Criminal Appeals ruled that the main issue in that case was that uh, the defendant in that case was actually entitled to a self-defense charge that the language uh, is, is clear and it says in the case itself that according to the plain language of the statute, Texas Penal Code Section 904 is not a separate statutory defense. Rather, it is incorporated into the law of self-defense where a defendant is charged with using a deadly weapon if the evidence presented at trial triggers the application of Texas Penal Code 904 defendant would be entitled to an instruction on non-deadly force self-defense under Texas Penal Code 931 and in this case 932 uh, but what what we're asking for judges just I, I think this including this instruction will serve two, two purposes first of all without it our client is going to suffer extreme prejudice because what what it's going to allow the court or the, the the prosecution to do is to argue to the jury that our client was the one who brought the knife to the fight now we don't know that that's in dispute and that's not been proven but i i'm quite certain that that's part of what they're going to argue and if they are to argue that and we're not able to argue that even if he, even if he did, even assuming for the sake of argument that he did bring the knife out, that he was entitled to do so at that point when he was threatened with an assault. And so for that reason, I think it's important just on the issue of fundamental fairness and not to prejudice our client from arguing something that he should be entitled to under the, the facts and the evidence that was presented at trial. The other issue is I think it's very likely that if we don't put it in there, we may get a question about it later. And I think it's much easier to put it in now. They have it if they need it versus making the same arguments later and I and I apologize to the court I usually never ever have an issue with forgetting something in a jury charge I will own that I will take responsibility for it I was looking at everything just one more time late last night and I saw that that it wasn't in there and I was so tired on Friday I just didn't think about it and now I know and I will never let it happen again but i just didn't i didn't feel comfortable texting or emailing everybody late on a sunday night so that's my bad and i apologize and it won't ever happen again but but my client is on trial for his life and it's important and i do think that we have to have that in there to be able to to argue and to respond to what I anticipate the state's argument will be and what, what their argument, what, what their opening statement even told the jury. So we ask that that be included. It's a very, um, you know, minor change as far as what we're asking for. It's just a, a very short paragraph and that it's, it's so essential to him having a fair trial. We would ask you to include it. All right, any final arguments, State? Uh, just to cite further to Gamino, Your Honor, briefly. Uh, as the Court of Appeals correctly noted, if Section 904 applies, then the use of a gun does not constitute deadly force. And therefore, Section 9.32 would become inapplicable. If Section 904 applies, then the use of a gun would, by default, be the use of force in self-defense and section 931 would be the applicable provision. Thus, we agree with the Court of Appeals conclusion that the appellant was not disqualified, disqualified from receiving a self-defense instruction, notwithstanding the fact that he was charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. 
All right. Defense, I'll give you the final argument because it's your request. Well, again, Judge, that that doesn't limit that they cited that case as a limitation on 904, and there is no such limitation. And the language of the case is clear. It says when self-defense is touched on by by in, in a trial, that that 904 is triggered. And I don't think that it could be any clearer than that. And and it wouldn't cause our client harm not to include it. It would cause him irreparable harm because it's going to limit us as you know we are we are only we can only argue what the 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 court gives to the jury as the law and i think it's just grossly unfair to deprive the jury from having an accurate picture of what the law is with regard to who produced a weapon and and what the justifications were legally for whoever produced a weapon and I, so I ask you to include it. It doesn't, it doesn't hurt anything to include it, but it certainly hurts us if it's not included. All right. All right. The court will allow uh, that to be included in the jury charge. Uh, each of you will have 20 minutes for argument. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, everyone, while the charge is being prepared, if you are ready on something, now is the time to approach the court. Everyone move with the purpose. No, but uh, we've got a, a disposition for competency here. Yes. I think. So we just need to reset the yeah. um, <clears throat> Richard Flores. I've already told them one thirty. Oh, you told them Yes. You no, know, we are jury panel coming in at one thirty. Mister, Mister Gonzalez Isaac is here again. I just wanted to give you a heads up for later that he, he will he will need another letter if we can get it for. Uh, no, I mean, why is he here? In case we need him for punishment. Okay. All right. Yes. Thank you. Willie Cunningham. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Where are we on this discovery? Discovery, going through discovery and reviewing. I could have another setting for that purpose. All right. I need a 30 day reset on Cunningham for discovery. Thank you, Judge. All right. You'll come back on April 1st. Once you sign the reset form, you are excused. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you for dressing appropriately for court. Thank you. <laughs> Diana, and could you give it to the, all right, 
Thank you. Could you give it to the attorneys? Judge, did you want to address the other issue with regard to the lemonade or the- uh, Just one second. Okay. Uh, Richard Murray. Good morning, Your Honor. Good morning. Judge, on Where is your client? All right, he needs to come forward. Where are we on this psychological evaluation? Uh, we have a hearing on March 7th. Okay. The court came back basically says it was competent, but we've had the hearing put by the court. All right, Norma, on Richard Murray, put this case on March 11th. Yes, sir. All right, we'll be back on March 11th. Thank you, Judge. Thank, Thank you, Judge. Excuse me. Uh, once you sign the reset form. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Thank you for dressing appropriately for court. You always do, though. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> All right. You can have a seat. You can have a seat. All right, y'all need to have the clerk pull the phone. Oh, I'm so sorry. I um, kept Claudia Aaron. And your client needs to come up. Uh, Claudia. Claudia Aaron. All right, where are we on discovery? I believe we have everything um, we need at this point. The one thing I have um, outstanding is they, they have alluded to some evidence that doesn't look like they maintain. So I am following up on that paper trip. What evidence is this? It's the, um, the vape pens that it doesn't mean it doesn't seem like they maintained the custody of those. So I just needed to follow up. I'm going to contact to see if they're the. Uh, All right. Are the vape pens alleged to be a part of uh, your honor. the offense? They're not. All right. Was an offer tender? There was, Your Honor. All right, Norma, if you can put this on March 18th for a plea deadline date. All right, once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Sorry. All right, and states, you may want to move your boxes and your computer equipment. Yes, ma'am. All right, we're back on the record in 2021 CR 11795. Have both parties had a chance to review the charge? State. Yes, Your Honor. Defense. Judge, I'm on this one. I have, Your Honor. Any objections? State, Judge. None from the defense, All right. Anything else before the jury is brought in? Yes. And Judge, we do have an issue that um, that was the, the issue that came up during trial. All right. What is the issue? That was, uh, I don't want the state to be able to reference or to give their, their spin on any uh, Thing that they believe that they saw from council table to the jury. State. Your Honor, it's an open courtroom. I don't think either of us were planning on that. So, well, I don't. I don't think that they should be able to testify to the jury what they think they saw because it was. State has just said they were not planning on commenting on anything regarding that. I didn't understand. That's what she was saying. Is that what you meant? I said that neither me and Allie were planning on talking about that. Okay, then I'm good. All and right. Your Honor, but, for the record, yes. the state has never testified with regard to that. We simply asked the witness questions. Yes. All right, let's bring the jury in.
Thank you. And everyone who's in the gallery, you need to make sure that your phones are on silent. There is nothing worse when people are giving closing arguments that somebody's phone goes off because it messes up their flow. Today is Monday. Hi. All right, it's Monday, but we're going to make it a great Monday. So each side, you have 20 minutes time announcements needed? Two minutes. Okay. And Judge, we're going we're gonna to split ours. I don't think that Rolando's going to need a warning, but if he can also give me two minutes if I get there. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, let's bring him in. All right, for the jury. I guess the I'm for you, so. All right, everyone, please be seated. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I know that you'll notice the courtroom is a little bit crowded. Uh, this is part of my docket. So that is why you see the extra people in the courtroom. Uh, but uh, majority of it has absolutely nothing to do with this case. There may be some witnesses in the courtroom that you've seen testify before, and they are allowed to be here for closing arguments. I'm going to read to you the uh, charge of the court. You do not have to memorize this. Uh, it will be sent back with you when you begin your deliberations. Members of the jury, the defendant Angel Gonzalez stands charged by indictment with the offense of murder alleged to have been committed on or about the third day of October 2021 in Bear County, Texas. The defendant has pleaded not guilty. One, our law provides that a person commits the offense of murder if he intentionally or knowingly causes the death of an individual or if he intends to cause serious bodily injury and commits an act clearly dangerous to human life that causes the death of an individual. Two, individual means a human being, being who is alive. Deadly weapon means anything manifestly designed, made, or adapted for the purpose of inflicting death or serious bodily injury, or anything that in the manner of its use or intended use is capable of causing death or serious bodily injury. Bodily injury means physical pain, illness, or any impairment of physical condition. Serious bodily injury means a bodily injury that creates a substantial risk of death or that causes death, serious permanent disfigurement, or protracted loss or impairment of the function of any bodily member or organ. Three, a person acts intentionally or with intent with respect to the result of his conduct when it is his conscious objective or desire to cause the result. A person acts knowingly or with knowledge with respect to a result of his conduct when he is aware that his conduct is reasonably certain to cause the result. Four, now if you unanimously find from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that on or about the third day of October, 2021 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant, Angel Gonzalez, did intentionally or knowingly cause the death of an individual, namely Isaac Aguilar, by cutting or stabbing Isaac Aguilar with a deadly weapon, namely a knife, that in the manner of its use or intended use was capable of causing death or serious bodily injury, or the defendant, Angel Gonzalez, with intent to cause serious bodily injury to an individual 
namely Isaac Aguilar, did commit an act clearly dangerous to human life that caused the death of Isaac Aguilar by cutting or stabbing Isaac Aguilar with a deadly weapon, namely a knife, that in the manner of its use or intended use was capable of causing death or serious bodily injury, then you will next consider whether Angel Gonzalez acted in self-defense and proceed to paragraph five. If you do not so find beyond a reasonable doubt, or if you have a reasonable doubt thereof, you will find the defendant, Angel Gonzalez, not guilty of the offense of murder and do not consider paragraph five. Five, you are instructed that it is a defense to this prosecution if the conduct of the defendant was justified by law. A person is justified in using force against another when and to the degree he reasonably believes the force is immediately necessary to protect himself against the other's use or attempted use of unlawful force. The use of force against another is not justified in response to verbal provocation alone. A person is justified in using deadly force against another, one, if the person would be justified in using force against the other in the first place, as set out above, and two, when and to the degree the person reasonably believes the deadly force is immediately necessary to protect himself against the other's use or attempted use of unlawful deadly force. Reasonable belief means a belief that would be held by an ordinary and prudent person in the same circumstances as the defendant. Deadly force means force that is intended or known by the person using it to cause or in the manner of its use or intended use is capable of causing death or serious bodily injury. Bodily injury means physical pain, illness, or any impairment of physical condition, including death. Serious bodily injury means bodily injury that creates a substantial risk of death or that causes death serious permanent disfigurement or protracted loss or impairment of the function of any bodily member or organ. A person, one, who has a right to be present at the location where the deadly force is used, and two, who has not provoked the person against whom the deadly force is used, and three, who is not engaged in criminal activity at the time the deadly force is used, is not required to retreat before using deadly force. If all three of these factors are met, then in determining whether such actor reasonably believed that the use of force ne necessary, a finder of fact may not consider whether the actor failed to retreat. A person has a right to defend from apparent danger to the same extent as he would had the danger been real, provided he acted upon a reasonable apprehension of danger as it appeared to him from the standpoint at the time. The threat of force is justified when the use of force is justified as instructed above. A threat to cause death or serious bodily injury by the production of a weapon or otherwise, as long as the actor's purpose is limited to creating an apprehension that he will use deadly force if necessary, does not constitute the use of deadly force. The defendant is not required to prove self-defense. The defendant, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant's conduct was not justified by self-defense. Therefore, if you find from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant, Angel Gonzalez, committed the offense of murder as charged in the indictment and as instructed in paragraph four, but you further find from the evidence that, or you have a reasonable doubt as to whether at the time he did so, one, Angel Gonzalez reasonably believed as viewed from his standpoint that Isaac Aguilar was using or attempting to use unlawful deadly force against Angel Gonzalez, and two, Angel Gonzalez reasonably believed, as viewed from his standpoint, that his use of deadly force and the degree of deadly force used were immediately necessary to protect himself against Isaac Aguilar's use or attempted use of deadly force. And three, Angel Gonzalez's use of deadly force was not in response to verbal propagation alone. Then you will find in favor of the defendant on his claim of self defense and acquit the defendant, Angel Gonzalez, and say by your verdict, not guilty of the offense of murder as charged in the indictment. However, if you find from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant, Angel Gonzalez, committed the offense of murder as charged in the indictment and as instructed in paragraph four, and you further find from the evidence beyond a reasonable doubt that one, Angel Gonzalez did not reasonably believe as viewed from his standpoint that Isaac Aguilar was using 
or attempting to use unlawful deadly force against Angel Gonzalez, or two, Angel Gonzalez did not reasonably believe, as viewed from his standpoint, that the use of deadly force and degree of deadly force used was immediately necessary to protect himself against Isaac Aguilar's use or attempted use of deadly force, or three, Angel Gonzalez's use of deadly force was in response to verbal provocation alone, then you will find against the defendant on his plea of self-defense, and you will find the defendant, Angel Gonzalez, guilty of the offense of murder as charged in the indictment. Our law provides the defendant may testify in his own behalf if he elects to do so. This, however, is a right accorded a defendant, and in the event he elects not to testify, that fact cannot be taken as a circumstance against him. In this case, the defendant has elected not to testify, and you are instructed that you cannot and must not refer or allude to that fact throughout your deliberations or take it in consideration for any purpose whatsoever as a circumstance against him. You are instructed that you must not communicate with or provide any information to anyone or receive any information from anyone by any means about this case. You may not use any electronic device or media, such as telephone, cell phone, smartphone, iPhone, Blackberry, iPad, tablet or computer, the internet, any internet service or any text or instant messaging service or any social media platform, internet chat room, blog or website to include, but not limited to Google, Facebook, MySpace, Instagram, Snapchat, LinkedIn, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, or X to communicate with anyone any information or receive any information from anyone about this case or to conduct any research about this case until I accept your verdict. Written statements made by a witness to investigators or other officers or police reports made by officers or tendered by the prosecution to the defense for purposes of cross-examination are not part of the evidence unless introduced in evidence. Many times statements and reports may be marked with an exhibit number, but are neither offered nor received in evidence. I can send only statements and reports received in evidence to the jury room. You are instructed that statements made by counsel are not evidence. You are instructed that statements of counsel made during argument, if not supported by evidence or statements of law made by counsel, if not in harmony with the law as stated to you by the court in these instructions are to be wholly disregarded. You must disregard any comment or statement made by the court during the trial or in these instructions, which may seem to indicate an opinion with respect to any fact, item of evidence, or verdict to be reached in this case. No such indication is intended. You are instructed that the grand jury indictment is not evidence of guilt. It is the means whereby a defendant is brought to trial in a felony prosecution. It is not evidence nor can it be considered by you in passing upon whether this defendant is guilty or not guilty. During your deliberations in this case, you must not consider, discuss, nor relate any matters not in evidence before you. You should not consider nor mention any personal knowledge or information you may have about any fact or person connected with this case, which is not shown by the evidence. You are instructed that you are not to let bias, prejudice, or sympathy play any part in reaching a verdict in this case. After argument of counsel, you will retire to the jury room, select your own presiding juror, and proceed with your deliberations. After you have reached a unanimous verdict, the presiding juror was certified thereto by filling in the appropriate forms attached to this charge and signing his or her name as presiding juror. You are the exclusive judges of the facts proved of the credibility of the witnesses and of the weight to be given the testimony, but you are bound to receive the law from the court, which is hearing given to you and be governed by that law. In order to return a verdict, each juror must agree to that verdict, but jurors have a duty to consult each other and to deliberate with a view to reaching unanimous agreement. If that can be done without violence to individual judgment, a unanimous vote means all 12 jurors must agree. Each juror must decide the case for himself, but only after an impartial consideration of the evidence with his fellow jurors. 
In the course of deliberations, a juror should not hesitate to re-examine his own views and change his opinion if convinced it is erroneous. However, no juror should surrender his honest conviction as to the weight or effect of the evidence solely because of the opinion of his fellow jurors or for the mere purpose of returning a verdict. All persons are presumed to be innocent and no person may be convicted of an offense unless each element of the offense is proved beyond a reasonable doubt. The fact that a person has been arrested, confined, or indicted for, or otherwise charged with the offense gives rise to no inference of guilt at his trial. The law does not require a defendant to prove his innocence or produce any evidence at all. The presumption of innocence alone is sufficient to acquit the defendant unless the jurors are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt of the defendant's guilt after careful and impartial consideration of all the evidence in the case. The prosecution has the burden of proving the defendant guilty, and it must do so by proving each and every element of the offense charged beyond a reasonable doubt. And if it fails to do so, you must acquit the defendant. It is not required that the prosecution prove guilt beyond all possible doubt. It is required that the prosecution's proof excludes all reasonable doubt concerning the defendant's guilt. In the event you have a reasonable doubt as to the defendant's guilt, after considering all the evidence before you and these instructions, you will acquit him and say by your verdict, not guilty. Suitable forms for your verdict are attached to the charge for your convenience, if you care to use them, but they are not intended to suggest to you in any way what your verdict should be, and you may or may not, as you see fit, make use of them. At any rate, your verdict must be in writing and signed by your presiding juror. Your only duty at this time is to determine whether the defendant is guilty or not guilty under the indictment in this cause, and you must restrict your deliberations to the issue of whether the defendant is guilty or not guilty and nothing else. After you have retired to the jury room, no one has any authority to communicate with you except the officer who has you in charge. Do not attempt to talk to the officer or anyone else concerning any question you may have. Instead, address your question to the court in writing. If you want to communicate with the court, notify the deputy. Any and all communications relative to the case must be written, prepared by the presiding juror, and submitted to the court through the deputy. Respectfully submitted, Judge Stephanie Boyd, 187th District Court, Bear County, Texas, and suitable forms are attached. Uh, State, are you prepared with closing arguments? Yeah, Your Honor. All right, you may proceed. There are no perfect families. We all know this. Just like we know that there are no perfect victims. Isaac Aguilar was by no means a perfect man, but he was loved as a father, a son, a partner, and as a brother. Until his brother took his life. The tale is all this time. Now, before we go into what Anna and I had to prove and how we proved it, I'm going to briefly go over what evidence you guys get to consider. We talked about how testimony is evidence. So think about what the witnesses told you. You'll get the 911 calls. You can listen to them again if there's anything you need to listen to. The photos, the videos, not even the physical evidence. That is the evidence that has been presented to you. Now, things like police reports or prior statements or anything that we said, that's not going to go back. A lot of times we'll have police reports or other statements that are marked, but they have to testify about it. The evidence is their testimony. That's why those don't go back to you. So don't sit there wondering why we're trying to not send them back. Now, as Judge just read to you, and as we talked about during Vodire, there are two ways here to get to murder. Whether you believe that Angel intentionally and knowingly caused his death by stabbing him, or whether you believe that he intended to cause serious bodily injury and committed an act clearly dangerous to human life, and that led to his death. Now, how do we know intent? We know intent when you take out a three and a half inch blade and you stab your brother, not once in the chest, but you pull it out and you stab him a second time in the chest. One hard enough that this entire three and a half inch blade goes three and a half inches to his heart. Then you pull it out in whatever order and you stab him hard enough again 
to mark two of his ribs. That is intentional. And you know that even if you don't kill him, it is substantial risk of killing him. That's what happened, folks. Sit here and figure out if I can close this. Now, you don't have to agree on which one. You guys just all have to agree that one of these, beyond a reasonable doubt, has been just for you. Let's talk a little about self-defense. You cannot respond to non-deadly force with deadly force. Let's talk about the only two people who saw any sort of force from Isaac. The two friends of his that ran away. The two friends of his that drove him away from the scene of a crime in a stolen vehicle. They said, oh, Isaac swung at Angel. Angelica said he swung it in at Angel, but she didn't see if he hit or not. Isaiah said, yeah, Isaac swung an angel, but he slapped him. And then the scuffle broke out. A slap and a little tussling on the ground does not justify stabbing him. Yeah, he got busted up. Angel did too. You've been cracked in the nose. Sometimes it can split your nose. Or if you're struggling for your life after being stabbed in the chest, yeah, the knife could have come up and cut him in the nose. He wasn't justified. How dare he? When you're considering this, you have to believe, was it reasonable? Did he have a reasonable belief that he was in danger? Would a reasonable and prudent person in his situation say, yeah, you know what? My life's in danger. Let me take out my knife, stab my brother twice. But for ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances, not a little slap fight between brothers. Other things you can consider, not to see whether or not, hey, did he act in self-defense? So look at what he did after. We know that he ran up at Juliet and yelled, don't snitch at me. Why are you trying to snitch? Don't call the cops. Now his two friends got up there and said, oh, we didn't run away. You know, we were like, oh, this could get wrong. Let's just calmly walk up. No, we know that didn't happen because you heard it on the 911 call. You heard Juliet and other people screaming at Angel not to leave. They fled. He and his friends fled and they drove off in a stolen car. And what did he do? He started taking selfies in the car because he knew he messed up. And he immediately started trying to spit. How am I gonna protect myself? I'm gonna start taking selfies in this stolen car while I left my brother gasping for air on a slide. That's what I'm gonna do. Then I'm gonna take a shower. You know, wash up all this blood. I'm gonna take a shower and I'm gonna throw away my clothes. I'm gonna toss these in the dumpster and I'm gonna take more selfies. Anything to avoid being in trouble. And we know that he did this before he even knew Isaac was dead because his friends told you that as soon as he got notified of his death, he ran off because that's what he does. He runs. And then when the police came from a week later, he didn't go try to say like, hey, I'm really sorry about this. I didn't mean to. He attacked me. Here's my proof. No, he ran. He ran and he jumped off a balcony and had to be tackled into the ground because he knew what he had done. And then when he came and got interviewed, he said, just take a little nap on the floor. Cool as you please. That's not something that somebody who was fearful for their life who is heartbroken that they killed their brother, their only brother, that's not what they do. No, he would have been devastated and apologetic. No, all he cared about was how do I get away with this? Now, when you go back and you believe your deliberations, what Anna and I had to prove to you was those things beyond a reasonable doubt. But remember, there is no definition. Each of you can use your common sense. It's not beyond all doubt. There might be pieces where you're like, mm, I have a question about this, but do you have a doubt? Is it a reasonable doubt? But most importantly, did it go to one of the elements Anna and I had to prove? If it's not about one of the elements, then the verdict is guilty and you need to find him so. All right, defense. 
May it please the court. Yes. Counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, the court just read to you the jury. Before you go back there, I want to touch over some of the concepts that you're going to be alluding to whenever you're going. All of the evidence comes from the witness stand, and the testimony comes from the witness stand. The state needs to prove that he intentionally or knowingly caused the death of an individual, or if he intends to cause serious bodily injury and commits an act really dangerous to human life that causes the death of an individual. So what is the key word here? Intent. And the state needs to prove intent beyond a reasonable doubt. And let's briefly touch on the facts on this death. They brought you two witnesses that were there on that party that day. Who? Julia and Christine. And when they were up here, what did they testify to? Think about it. Nothing. They did not testify to anything. They were both there. We had Julia come down. No, we had Christine come down. Stand right here. And Kathy asked her, how far away were you from this argument? Right there. I was right here. I was looking at it. And what does she remember about it? Nothing. They both said, I was on the right. One was on the left. But they don't remember anything that happened on that day. Not a single thing. They can't tell you who had the knife, how the fight broke out, what the discussion was about. The state has failed to prove to you intent beyond a reasonable doubt. Let's move forward. Let's say that the murder was committed. We get to paragraph number five, which would be the self-defense in this case. And a person is justified in using deadly force against another if the person would be justified and using force against the other in the first place, as set out above, and when to agree the person reasonably believes the deadly force is immediately necessary to protect himself against the other's use or attempted use of unlawful deadly force. So let's think about that. We have two other witnesses come in that day, Angelica and Isaiah. And what did they tell you? They gave us more context to the story. They also cannot tell you who had the knife, but they painted a bigger picture for us. And what was that picture? Angel is on the floor, laying down, and we have his brother on top of him. What do we know about his brother? We heard from Dr. Five. He is 70 inches tall, which roughly equates to about 5'10". He's 252 pounds. Imagine that for a second. The brother on top of you, any single one of us would use self-defense to protect ourselves. Every single one of us would do that. And then we get to the most important point. When self-defense is raised, it is the state's burden to disprove that. Beyond a reasonable doubt. What have they done to do that to you? Nothing. They have not brought you a single witness for that. Like they said earlier, our comments, our statements are not evidence. The only evidence you can consider in your deliberations when you go back there is what came out of this witness that. Therefore, I ask, when you go back there and deliberate, think about everything that you saw and heard, as you will come back with a verdict of not guilty. Thank you. Counsel. Thank you. Please support the council. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the part where I really do wish for the days when I was a prosecutor because they get the last word. So this is the last time we're going to be able to say a single thing to you about this case before you go and deliberate. But what I will ask you is please don't let the loudest voice or the last voice that you hear sway you from a careful consideration of all of the evidence in this case. Because it doesn't matter who speaks last or who can show the most righteous anger about the situation. What matters is evidence. And, you know, 
A lot of times the most reasonable explanation for things is always the one that makes the most sense. And while, you know, we can talk about Angel grabbing the knife and somehow stabbing Isaac, from all the evidence, if you take it all back there and look at it, I think that what you can find is the most plausible explanation for everything that kind of comports with those places in the testimony and with the physical evidence where you see those kind of intersections of what was presented by the state's witnesses and what was presented by the defense witnesses. Because as we know, a lot of times, the truth is usually somewhere in the middle. And it is very much probably the case here where you have a lot of different perspectives come to bear. And there's a lot of reasons why people sometimes don't hear things that they should hear or they hear things differently than what actually was said. I mean, think about it in your own lives. I mean, nobody is a tape recorder. Nobody is a video camera. We all bring our own experiences and perspectives to that. But what I think is the most plausible explanation for how Isaac ended up dead is you have an altercation. And again, we don't know who had the knife. Let's say Angel had the knife and he started out with the knife. Well, there's an instruction in, in the court's charge that tells you that you can, you can actually brandish a knife to keep yourself from being assaulted. Or let's say that Isaac had the knife and it got pulled out when the, the altercation became physical. But what we know is if Angel's on the ground and he has Isaac on top of him, and I, I kind of wish I had worn pants today to demonstrate, but I'm going to try to show you. Imagine that I'm Isaac, because I used to have a brother, I'd fight with him and we'd jump on top of each other and sometimes I'd be the one on the ground, sometimes he'd be the one on the ground. But if Isaac's on top of him and they're struggling with the knife, if Isaac is cutting him or they're struggling and you lose your balance, oh, that's how a knife gets in. That's where that force comes from. And you try to get up again. And if that first knife point was the one that pierced his heart, he would fall again. And then he falls and, and again, and maybe in the other order. I don't know, but that makes sense. And I'll tell you the one thing that they want to shy away from and I'll tell you why I think this is the most plausible explanation. Now, if you look at, some of these can go back with you, and these are defense exhibits, but if you look at the injuries, and you know, I wanna talk about, it's taking a selfie. If you think that you might be in trouble later, and you might need a picture to show that you were injured because you don't trust the police and you don't trust you'll get a fair shake. I don't have any problem with Angel taking a picture of the way he was injured. I think it was actually a pretty smart thing to do. And I'm glad we have the pictures to show you now. Because otherwise, the argument would have been that he didn't have any injuries. So thank goodness that he did. But it, you'll have, you can take back the, the chart that tells you, or the diagram, I'm sorry, that tells you where things were, where the blood spatter was, where the knife was. The knife, he didn't run off with the knife. Where was the knife? It dropped from Isaac's hand over by the slide. But here's the thing I think that really, really clenches it.
if you're struggling with a knife, this would explain why Isaac was the major contributor to the handle of the knife. Angel was inconclusive. That means there wasn't even enough DNA to put him in or out. But there was certainly enough of him on that knife blade to put him on the knife blade. And the best evidence that you got was from that DNA guy. Because I'll tell you what, DNA is the closest thing to a video that you're going to get. And what that tells you is that more likely than not, the person who had the handle of the knife in their hand was Isaac. I told you in my opening that I do believe that juries know the truth when they see it. Because you are the objective observers now. And, you know, I think especially in these types of cases where someone has died, and I am never here to minimize that. As a mother, I can't even imagine the kind of loss that Isaac Sr. has gone through as a parent to lose a child. No one should go through that, ever. But I think a lot about, you know, why we even are here. Why do we even have trials? Why do we even have laws that give us a guide of how to deal with situations when human beings find themselves in circumstances like this? And the more I've done this, and the more I see the grief and the loss and this unfortunate need that human beings sometimes are saddled with where we want vengeance. We want someone to pay. There's a dead body. Somebody's got to pay now. And I think that our laws and the court's charge, which may seem like a very mundane kind of document, but there's something really just so eloquent and beautiful about that jury charge. Because what that jury charge does is it takes our baser need for vengeance and it requires us to temper that with mercy. And mercy is not a not guilty verdict. That's justice. In this case, mercy is not, it's not a weakness. And it's not just ignoring the circumstances of this case. And it's not saying that Angel doesn't deserve consequences. But what the mercy of your very well-reasoned and absolutely called for not guilty verdict would be is not ignoring any consequences for Angel, but recognizing. He will have consequences for this for the rest of his life. He will never escape them. And any sort of vengeance that anybody might call for in the guise of justice is not going to serve anyone. It's a hard call to find somebody not guilty when a murder has been alleged. But when you go back there and you look piece by piece 
with well-reasoned evaluations of the evidence that you have and the absolute lack of evidence, the things that you don't have. I ask you to do the right thing. I ask you to do the hard thing. I ask you to do the thing that you have taken an oath to do and to hold the state to their burden of beyond a reasonable doubt. Remember how significant that is. It's not something you get to ignore because somebody died. Don't let them ask you to do that. Don't do it. Please find the angel not guilty because he did not murder his boy. Thank you. Sweet. And the Lord said, what have you done? Your brother's blood cries out to me. Ground. Hey, Nabal, right? A tale as old as time. You know, I don't have a lot to say to you today that Ms. Jackson hasn't already gone over with you. But um, I want to address one of the defense counsel's points real quick about the knife and where it came from. You heard evidence from Christine's testimony that Isaac wasn't known to carry a knife. And I think everything that you need to know about that knife comes from this program. So let's move on. And let's talk about the intent, how we know that he's guilty and how this is not self-defense. Stabbing. Only Isaac was stabbed. He was stabbed two times. Stab wound A, three and a half inches deep, straight into his heart by Angel's hand. Three and a half inches, same length as a knife blade. And you heard Dr. Fye get up here on the stand and tell you that even if he had been stabbed right outside the front doors of a hospital, that that wound was devastating. And he didn't think that he would survive that, even if it happened right there in the front doors of the hospital. Serious bodily injury or death, right? That's what he classified it as. And the sheer fact that there are two stab wounds proves to you intent. And that's okay. Not just one, but two. And one of them straight to the heart of his brother. Now the first flight, I call this the first flight flight or fleeing the scene can show consciousness of guilt and you're allowed to consider that. What do we know about the first flight? He fled from the scene as his blood brother was bleeding out. And it wasn't just the two of them there. He left his brother, he stabbed his brother in front of his sister, in front of his brother's pregnant girlfriend, in front of his, his or her sister, and in front of the kids that were outside playing in the yard. Who does that? And then after he does that, we know he ran away because his blood, which doesn't appear until he gets to the sidewalk and those droplets that are leading away, right? That's how we knew he fled. We're not hiding the fact that he was injured at this scene. It's just that the two witnesses that we brought you to tell the truth about what happened don't recall seeing that. They're telling the truth if they don't remember something, right? And the evidence that we have from our DNA doctor later is that we do have his blood at that scene and that those blood droplets are triple away to, um, as he gets to that stolen car and they take off. Furthermore, he comes at Juliet and he says, don't snitch on me. Don't snitch as he's running away. Evidence of guilt. Snitch about what? The fact that you murdered your brother? Or I guess at the time, the fact that you stabbed him at the, in the heart and you left him bleeding there? He gets to that stolen car and he leaves. First flight. And after he leaves, when he gets to his friend who drove the stolen car, he ditches his bloody clothes in a dumpster. He cleans himself up and he continues to take selfies of himself. And in the back of that getaway car, where's the concern for his brother? Where is that? Because in the back of the car, when he is bleeding from his face, or at least it's covered by a shirt that has blood on it, you're taking a selfie? Moments after you stabbed your older brother in the heart. Come on, give me a break. 
but we don't just have one flight, we have a second flight. Because when the police show up to execute that murder warrant, six days after the murder happened, when the police see him, he runs again. They barely give him, hit, or they barely are given a chance to announce. And he jumps off a second story balcony and he's tackled by Officer Owen because he booked it again. He runs. He is running from the truth. He is running from his guilt because he knows he's guilty. And then as he's in the SAPD interview room for murder, on a murder warrant, there he is. What happened? Here's what we know happened. Siblings gathered for a barbecue for his birthday. He called his niece a bitch. And Isaac took exception to that. They began to argue by all sides. This was not a yelling match, okay? It was a disagreement. It was described that way, not only from our witnesses, but from the other witnesses. Just a verbal argument. And then Angel gets a, uh, comes to Isaac, and they end up wrestling on the ground. Angel pulls a knife. And how do we know Angel pulled a knife? Because Isaac is the one who was stabbed twice in the chest, ultimately resulting in his death. And then Angel runs. Okay, I started this whole thing by telling you the story from Juliet's perspective. Because what you hear in the 911 call from Juliet is so raw and emotional and she's giving you a play-by-play -play about what just happened and what's happening at the time that she's on the phone with 911. that is how you know right how do you know somebody's telling you truth you can hear this in her voice that raw emotion and she goes back over to where isaac is laying on the slide bleeding and she's panicking she says no christine don't come over here she doesn't want her sister to see that. That is sibling love. Not stabbing your brother in the heart and leaving him for dead in your sister's backyard. He is guilty of murder. And don't let anybody convince you of anything else. Look at the evidence and listen and, and see what it shows you. You heard everything you need to hear and you know everything you need to know from this courtroom because this man here never got the chance to see his daughter born after his death that man there never never got to hold her wasn't there for christine at her birth isn't there for his other children that is me grown-ass men who make grown-ass decisions should face grown-ass consequences. Hey! Um, uh, somebody stop, somebody stop, um, one of my friends. What's the address? What's the address? Hey, John, not need me. What's the address? Hello, I need to add a little. I need to add a little. I need, I shut the fuck up. I need a chair. What's the address? I don't know where you're at. It's, uh, it's 17, 17 in the out. He's with his friend. Okay, okay, hold on. Is he breathing? I don't know. I just 
Like I said, once the police get there, it's tell us it's safe to check them out or go in there and treat them and get them to the hospital. Y'all going to be inside or outside? Y'all inside or outside? We're outside. Okay, what about the person who stabbed him? Is he still there? He left. He left. I gave the service. I think he took off. Okay, continue to hold pressure until we get there. Like I said, once the police uh, get there and tell us it's safe, we're going to go and treat them. Uh, help's on the way. If he stops breathing, we're going to have to start doing chest compression. Okay, is he breathing right now? The Okay. All right, I'll let you talk to the police officer. We're on the way. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to step down and I'm going to have one of you all remain behind. Anybody who's ready, let me know. Okay, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Jason, Jason, if you'll let uh, opposing counsel know that the courtroom next door that's where juries, yes, there, there are so many Jasons in the courtroom. All right. If you'll let Anton know that jury selection is actually going to take place next door. Yes. All right. Anybody who's ready? Who's here on Aldo Salas? That's me, Judge. All right, Mr. Salas, if you'll come forward. He's in the back. Sir. He's where? He's in the back. Oh. In the back, as in custody, or back here? Oh, okay. Just this is our first day. So, all right. Have the deputies bring him out. Okay, you are. You are.
Terrell Gidry. Who's the attorney for Terrell Gidry? I am your honor. All right. Who's the prosecutor? Did you confer? I did confer, but this is, uh, I just wanted to let the court know he was marked down as a bond forfeiture. He was actually in county court. Went down there. I, I don't him. have him as a bond forfeiture. There's that's nothing written told. in the file. That's what the DA told me. That's what was just told. So I just wanted to let the court know he's here. He was in county court and they sent him up here. No, he was marked as not being present, but I haven't issued a bond forfeiture. Okay, that's just what I was All marked right. on the All right, so part. Mr. Gidry, let me explain something to you. I understand there are issues that you have cases maybe in county court and district court. Mm -hmm. District court takes precedent over county court matters. So this is the court you need to appear in first. Do you understand? Yes, All right, thank you. I explained that to him. Okay. Just getting old. I'm getting old. I'm going to live in the world like it. <laughs> Words you don't want to put them. Mine actually came out. Yeah, I mean, this it's just one disc. It, no, it just, no. deteriorated. It just deteriorated over time. You know, like it's carrying all these blue places and all this stuff bouncing up the downstairs. Well, that's the way it's going to be. We're looking back to music here on my side. That's the side that it's from.
يا And council, just let me know when Mr. Salas is out, and we'll take Mr. Salas up. And Norman, they're not ready on that one. And they're not ready on this one. Sure. Okay. Oh, we'll do it one at a time. I just wanted to get all three files so that they'd be ready. Okay. <laughs> We can pass it to them. I'll do it one at a time. All right. Who's here on Nathaniel Villalobos? All right, so where are we on discovery? Your Honor, to the best of the state's knowledge, all discovery we have in our possession has been made available to all three defendants, specifically uh, Defendant Villalobos. Um, and my understanding from our last setting yes. is the discovery would be shared. So all three defendants would have each other's discovery. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And naturally the facts and the allegation happens simultaneously across all three defendants. So it's really the same thing, but out of an abundance of caution, everything has been provided to every defendant. As, we, as I stand here today, there are uh, two items that are of interest to all parties, state and defendants that are not in state possession, they're in possession of private entities that I am still working to obtain. And what two items are these? Uh, the, the deceased in this case had a uh, resident treatment at a Starlight Recovery in Kerrville for about 30 days in calendar year 22. Uh, we have issued subpoenas for it and we're getting trying to resolve some HIPAA issues to resolve that and um, What was the other? Oh, oh, oh and I am making the same inquiries of Child Protective Services records uh, for children that the deceased had with their ex-husband and obtaining those. I expect when those come in, I'll file them with the court uh, with the requisite protective order and then go from there. But I am, those I obviously don't expect to be as big a problem. All right, and with regards to the CPS records, what deadline did they give you? Uh, have not actually had a deadline judge. I've been working my way down to find the existence of them. And now that I know that they had, uh, 
that they identify, I'll make them direct. I'll let the court know and today you know, with a specific request. All right. Any other discovery other than those two items? Yes, sir. What are they? We have requested an audit of the evidence.com uh, program asking who has requested, uh, I guess, who from the police department viewed, looked at the body cams or anything else before the arrest, starting from the day of the incident all the way to now. Um, and those are in the possession of the police department, San Antonio Police Department. And that was discussed between the parties uh, earlier today. I will make that request. I've already sent a message to the handling detective uh, before making this appearance. Uh, there was an additional issue, um, any still photographs that the state has made and tendered, uh, has made based off the available body cam footage uh, that may intentionally, that may uh, ultimately be before a jury. I will provide those items, and I believe uh, there may be some more particularized requests from defendant uh, Alejandro, when his counsel are present. All right, so... With regards to the request that the defense is making, how long is that going to take? I don't have a time frame, Judge. I just sent that communication to the handling detective because there are approximately 54 individual body cam footages. Uh, obviously, we expect it to be limited to a smaller group, but anyone in the department that may have looked at or viewed that and I'm just trying to find out how long it would take to gather that for every body cam footage, every body cam video. I don't know. All right. Anything else? Uh, not, not from us. All right. This is what's going to happen. This case is coming back on April 29th. On April 29th, all the discovery needs to be turned in. All parties need to be prepared to sign off on discovery. If they're not prepared to sign off on acknowledgement of discovery, then what you will need to do is you will need to file a motion specifically stating what discovery is outstanding and what discovery you do not have. And then uh, state on that date, you need to be prepared also to tender an offer to defense. Yes, ma'am. All right. Is there anything else? No, Your Honor. All right. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Thanks for dressing appropriately for court. No, no. Eliza Alejandro. Please may I approach just quickly regarding yes. all the solace. Mm -hmm. And it's going to say he has Paul Doki as the attorney. Uh, okay. So I just want to look forward now. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. All right. Just give me one moment. All right, is this the same yes, case? Same so where are we on discovery? Uh, we have filed a motion to inspect the uh, hammer. And yeah. counsel has represented that he's going to arrange a meeting to have all the parties do that. In addition to that, he's going to uh, allow you any other physical items of evidence that all right so i don't have the motion to inspect but my understanding state that you're going to allow them to inspect whatever needs to be inspecting yes your honor we will try to seek a date that'll work for all three and view evidence desired we'll work out the particulars uh, between the parties All right, next. Um, we have filed a motion to take the deposition of uh, an individual who is homeless. And the reason for that is we believe that uh, given his physical health, he may not be available for trial. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the state's position is going to be, but we may need a hearing on that. All right, so who is this witness? Oh, and so do they have medical issues that may be they won't be available for trial. The specific individuals, a witness that lived in the home the night of the acts that led to the indictment, 
uh, a Santos, his last name fails me right now. Uh, he was interviewed and a statement was provided by police night of. Uh, since that time, he relocated at Haven for Hope. We, my office is looking for him now to make him available. Uh, once we do that, we will make sure that the, that the uh, parties are aware. Um, I don't. All right. I don't I don't sign off on uh, depositions unless you all are going to present something to the court that one, you believe this person is not going to be available for a trial. Maybe they have a medical issue. I don't know what his issues or circumstances are. So I don't have enough information to sign off on allowing, if that's a request from the uh, defense for me to order that there be a deposition taken. I don't have anything of that nature. So if you all have some information for me related to that, and it appears that this person may or may not be available at time for jury trial, then the witness can be brought in and you all will have a, have a chance to direct and cross. Yes, Anything else? And I'm sorry, the witness's name, uh, Santos De La Rosa? Yes, yes ma'am. Okay. And then- uh, 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 Just one moment. Let me write this on the docket sheet. All right, yes. And then the, the state was going to provide um, extract of JPEGs from the videos. This refers to still photos I've made in my own inspection. I will make those available to all parties today. Okay. And these are the photos from the body ham? Yes, ma'am. All right, next. I'm trying to pull up my list, Judge. Um, I had a list of, of uh, 11 items and uh, I believe that um, I was gonna send a letter to Mr. Um, All right, make sure you send the letter. To, uh, and the if there's an issue with state, you saying you don't have that information, the information doesn't exist, then you all need to come in before the April 29th date, if that's the issue. Yes, and uh, I can say to the court that when I've worked with Mr. Harris and exchange that communication, it's been fruitful. And if it's not, I'll advise the court. All right. All right. So we're going to come back on April 29th. And on April 29th, states, you need to be prepared to tender an offer. And everybody needs to be prepared to sign off on an acknowledgement of discovery. No. All right. Is there anything else? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you for dressing appropriately you, for Honor. court. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Alfred Flores. All right, so where are we on discovery with this case? Your Honor, if I may uh, briefly summation, the same uh, representations have been made. Uh, the audit trail information, which I'm still trying to find, will be made available to Defendant Flores when it's resolved, as well as uh, the still photos from body cam. I will make those available uh, to, as well as today. And when uh, Defendant Alejandro provides that list of 11, the response will be shared also with Defendant Flores. All right, so the same discovery issues for the previous accused are the same in this yes. cause as well? Yes, ma'am. All right, is there anything else other than what uh, previous defense attorneys have stated? 
Um, no judge. We're just working to also resolve a discrepancy in the number of discovery items per defendant. Uh, it is still different, and that just takes time under obviously fairness and due process to go through and find out why they're different. Yeah. And what it is, Your Honor, just on the mechanics of uploading information to three different cases simultaneously, um, my inspection with uh, my tech people as late as this morning before docket, it's all there, but certain two of the three cases kind of have duplicates or triplicates of the same thing. So it's not missing. It's just what's the one good copy that I got. It does create a volume. I will acknowledge that uh, for two of the three, but it's everything I know I have. I know it's been shared in abundance. Okay. All right. We're going to come back on April 29th on that date. I'm going to expect everyone to be prepared to sign off on discovery and states you'll need to tender an offer. Yes, ma'am. Is judge. there anything else? No, Judge. All right. Thanks for dressing appropriately for court. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Hi. How are you nice doing? To meet you. Uh, yes, please feel free to come down at any time. Okay. So how long have you been practicing? Um, almost three years. Oh, awesome. It's still new and exciting. Always, every day. Yes. <laughs> and on the criminal side, there's always something every, something different, mm -hmm. something that you have to review to look up the law because it's unique. So I like that about criminal side. Me too. All right. All right. If you ever need anything, just let us know. Okay. Thank you All so right, much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Yes. Thank you. Oh, and Daryl, I was going to say to you, thanks for dressing appropriately for court, but you always do. Yes, ma'am. All right. I know your mother as well. Yeah. All right, who is here on Yari Yari? Just give me a moment. Judge, I can't button my code anymore. I just, <laughs> oh, I don't that know, is stop. okay. It's shrinking. Code is shrinking. All right, court is going to call 2023. And I'm sorry if you all could, uh, you can move to that end. Court is calling 2023 CR 11464, State of Texas versus Yari Yari. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Zach Dunn for the state, Your Honor. Defense? Jay Moritz, Your Honor. And are you Mr. Yari? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So we were supposed to do sentencing on the 20th, but there was an issue whether or not your client was a citizen. And court, you, I mean, sorry, defense, you submitted to the court um, a document yes, that shows right. his citizenship? Yeah, that was sent to me by the um, the female that was involved in this case. She sent me a copy of it, and then I forwarded it. I have a, a photocopy also. Um, Thank you. Just make sure that probation sees that. Yeah, she got a copy, and it's in the file, Judge. Okay. And it shows that he was became a U.S. citizen on April 21st, 2023. And I'm gonna give him a copy of this, but I wanted to make sure 
because he may need it for the bill or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, that that was an issue before. All right. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report? Any objections from the state or the defense? No objections from the state, Your Honor. The only objection, of course, Judge, was to saying that he was a Somalian citizen and he's a U.S. citizen. All right. Uh, Mr. Yar, can you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. All right. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Yare, yare. All right. And so... Where were you born? I was born in Somalia and uh, I was in Kenya. All right. All right. So sometimes people don't understand the changing laws, right? Yeah. So do you understand that you're not allowed to hit children the way you hit your child? Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. All right. I understand from reading the PSI report and also from reading uh, the stipulations that your issue with your child was smoking marijuana and missing the tutoring session that they were supposed to go to. Yes, sir. All right, so you're not allowed to do that type of discipline. I understand why that may have happened, but you're not allowed to do it that way. You understand? Yes, sir. So how much did the tutoring cost? Um, was it free or not free? It was free, yes. All right, and he didn't show up. I read in the police report that instead of going to tutoring, he went to a friend's house yes. and used marijuana instead of going to tutoring? Yes. All right. I can understand your frustrations as a parent with that, but this is not the correct way to discipline someone. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Maybe you could try grounding. Maybe you could try not allowing them to leave the house, but for going to school and coming home. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Um, this is what I'm going to do. The state is silent on your application. I'm going to grant you deferred adjudication. And I'm going to sentence you to five years deferred adjudication. Oh, I'm sorry. You only, he only applied for regular probation. Correct, Judge. I did that because he had a felony, prior felony DWI. All right. So would your client wish to have deferred or no? Have this deferred where it's uh, not your conviction on your record if you complete the probation or do you? Yes. Yes. All right. So do you understand with deferred that the range of punishment for this case, if you were revoked, is up to 10 years in prison? Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that if I were to find you guilty, then the most time that you could be given if you were not to complete probation successfully would be five years in prison? Yes, Your Honor. So knowing that, do you wish to proceed with the court granting you deferred? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, counsel, I'm going to need you, once we're done, to have him sign the application for deferred. Yes, Judge. All right. I'm going to send it to you to five years deferred adjudication. I'm going to order parenting classes, 100 hours of community service restitution, uh, you must complete the parenting classes. If you successfully complete it, then the 100 hours of community service restitution will be deemed satisfied. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. There is proof of employment within 30 days. John, he has not been, he had an accident on the job and broke his leg. He hasn't been cleared by a, a doctor yet. So All as right. soon as he gets out, we, all right, we'll do proof of employment within 30 days or clearance from medical. But he needs to make sure that he's providing for himself. All right, so the proof of employment, there's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Regular reporting by Zoom or in person, there's to be regular random UAs, CPS compliance if applicable, field visits, one time per month for four months, uh, followed by probation's di discretion. 
I know there's a request for anger management. I don't know if anger management is the issue or really the issue is parenting. I agree. All right. So do you, do you all agree that the issue is a parenting issue or an, I can understand why someone would be upset that their child is doing marijuana and not going to school and not seeing the tutor. Agreed, Your Honor. All right. And then there is to be a $1,500 fine and that will be probated. Uh, probation, is there anything else that's needed? Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? Um. I would like to say about the community service and 100 hours in community service. Mm -hmm. So when do I need to be done now? Because uh, I'm still you know, trying to see my doctor to see. If no, what I said was you must complete parenting classes. Once you complete the parenting classes, the community service hours will be deemed satisfied. Okay. But it is very important for you to make sure that probation has a medical letter from your doctor saying that, saying that you're not allowed to work, if that's what he's saying. And also you need to provide any medications that they may have you taken, taking. Do you understand? Yes. Showing you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Good luck to you. Uh, we're off the record in this court to be successful in probation. Mm -hmm. You need to communicate with probation. Okay. If you feel they're not addressing some sort of issue you have, just let the court know. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. One last issue, Judge. Yes. You may want it on the record uh, about visitation of that child. Uh, He's CPS. He had some stuff he needed to do with CPS as far as some classes and some of these are going to take care of it before he could see the child again. Is there anything um, in there where he cannot have uh, visitation with his child? All right. What I'm going to add, we're back on the record. I'm going to add no unsupervised contact. So I'm, I assume, and this is from my experience, that CPS probably is going to start you off with having visitation with your child, either with a, a child protective services worker present or either the other parent present. And then slowly they will move you towards seeing your child maybe over the weekend and then talking to the child to see how things went. So for now, no unsupervised contact. If CPS changes things, then I will receive information from probation saying CPS wants you to have uh, unsu I'm sorry, unsupervised contact. Okay. okay. Yes. Um, is that with all minors or just his child? Uh, with all minors. All right. Is there anything else? No, Judge. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Uh, don't forget to sign the form. Yes, I'm going to do that. Thank you. All right, everyone, please move with the purpose. Dana Waters, Dana Waters. Oh, present. Oh, I'm sorry. I just wanted to make sure she was here. Renee Torres, Renee Torres. Johnny Joe Webb. All right, thank you. Daniel Martinez. Michael Castro, Burr and Staten, Blas Hernandez. I'm here on that case, Judge. All right. Are you all, did you request for him to be brought out? Yes. Okay. Well, once they bring him out, Oscar Alvera. All right. Hello. All right. Where are we on this case? Judge, we've uh, 
ten on ten uh, in the offer from the state right now to uh, convey it to Mr. Uh, Olvera. He said that right now he doesn't want to sign. He wants to talk to his dad first. And uh, how old are you? I'm uh, thirty. All he right. Communication with his dad. So let's. All right. Let me explain something to you. I'm going to give you time to talk to your father, but this is what I know about parents. Parents would like for you to talk to them before you have a criminal case pending. For example, when children go to a party, their parents would appreciate them giving them all the information up front and say, you know what, Jane Doe or John Doe has invited me to this party. Just want you to know their parents are not going to be home. There may be alcohol there. There may be drugs there. May I go? You understand what I'm saying? So you should speak to your parents before you have pending cases. You understand? All right. So I'm going to recall this in two weeks. And at that time, he needs to let the court know whether or not he's accepting the offer. All right, Ms. Ferguson, I need a two-week reset, please. You can come back on the 18th. All right, we'll be back on March 18th. That will be your plea deadline date. At that time, you need to let the court know whether or not you're accepting that offer. If you choose not to accept the offer, we'll proceed with trial. You understand? All right, do you have a questions about anything else? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay. I'll be excused. Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Juan Arambula. All oh, right. And your client's in the center and you're on this side, Mr. Watkins. All right. This is family violence. Hello. Hello. So on this case, there was a police report from Laredo. Yes, Your Honor. That's correct. Where are we on that? Um, so I actually had this case at the intake level. So I did make a request for that prior to the indictment of the case. It has not come in yet. So we'll follow up with our investigator and make sure that we get something in. All right, when is that going to be in? Does anybody have an idea? Um, I would hope pretty quickly, Judge. I, I hope it won't take very long. It's just a one police report that okay. I'm aware of. All right, so we're gonna recall this back on the 18th. At that time, all discovery needs to be completed. Were you able to tender an offer? Um, they spoke with Zachary, so I'll, I'll check. No, I'm kidding. We, we don't have offer yet, and Judge, uh, I, I know Ms. Ms. Nelson was in trial, but we, we're we going to have our pre-trial motions filed today, so, mm -hmm. and there are discovery requests in this motion. All right, so then, let me see. All right, Norma, recall this back for March 18th. And we will hear motions on that day. And we'll need the Laredo police report. That should be easy to get yeah. if it's in existence. All right, is there anything else? No, Judge, I believe we've covered everything. Thank you for your time. Oh, no, you're busy today. So. Oh, no, thank you. And thank you all both for addressing, well, all three of you are dressing appropriately for court. I really appreciate that. Judge, thank you. All right, thank you. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. You have a good day, Your Honor. Oh, thank you. You too. Victor De La Vega. Hello. And counsel, you're on this side. Yeah, I was just That's okay. Hello. All right. So how are we with the mental health court? 
So we actually, he's been accepted into the program. Uh, we actually got the contract. I'm on attendance, they'll, I guess, sign it. And then I believe uh, Ms. Pezian, who is the case manager, had emailed Norma uh, yes. earlier this week about it as well, letting him know that he was accepted into the program. All right, so he's been accepted into the program? Yes, ma'am. So uh, I've talked real briefly with Daniel about that. Uh, when he goes on Thursday, it's, oh, there he's sorry. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, well, because he's set today in County Court Joe, so I can run over there today as well. All so right. If you all will do that then, and what I'll do is I'll recall it for the 29th. But if you all already have that done, just bring it back up here and we'll take care of it. Okay. All Thank right. You. So, Ms. Ferguson on uh, Della Vega, if you'll give them a reset form for the 29th. But they may uh, this month, but they may come back with a dismissal today. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for dressing appropriately for court. Thank you. All right. Have a good one. All right. Has Blas Hernandez been brought out? All right. Who's the attorney for Blas Hernandez? He's just here, Judge. Um, All right. Mr. Hernandez, just have a seat. All right, where is Virgil? All right, is your client here? All right, is is he going to hire an appellate counsel? No, ma'am. That's why I was asking for him to be appointed on appellate counsel. Oh, so he will need to be here. You need him here? Yes. Okay, I can All do right. that. Just ask for Ms. Ferguson to set it. Okay, thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Quick question. Can he appear via Zoom? Because I think he does still work. I think he's gone back to work now. Sure. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Michael Pettis. What they have I'll oh, just put it here. I'll take it up in a moment. All right. On Michael Pettis, this is Criminal Trial Division. Yes, ma'am. I'm uh, describing the file. No problem. Keep for dressing appropriately for court. And of course, you always do. So I try. Thursday. Ooh, not All right. This is an intoxication manslaughter. So I'm assuming their discovery that still needs to be downloaded. Uh, it is our first setting, Judge. I, I think I might have already gone through the process of doing that. I know that uh, our brief discussions this morning, Daniel hasn't met with the complainants yet to get a sense of where we may be in. in very preliminary All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to recall this in 30 days. At that time, states, you'll need to be prepared to tender an offer. Yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. Ferguson. I need a reset date on Pettis, 30 days. March 1st. I mean, April 1st. All right. We'll come back on April 1st. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank 
All right. If Detective Drew can come this way. And is the attorney for Bloss here? Oh, sure, no problem. Oh, the problem is on SOP loss. Let me see. Uh, Norma, could you call Mr. Goki yes. for his client? And everyone, we're taking our break at noon. I got your papers out of order. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Who's the party on Jeremy Michael Tapia? Good for here. Can you talk? Are yes. you ready for us? Yes. Are y'all ready to proceed on the MTR? Um, yes, Your Honor. We were here previously, and he was asked to submit a UA. So we have already entered, please. Okay. You've, ah, uh, yes, to nine B. All right. So. How's he going? I'm sorry, Judge. That's okay. <laughs> yes, please. Um, Your, Your Honor, Mr. Tapia submitted a negative your analysis today, and counsel has his prescriptions um, from all of his um, medications. Okay. All right, we're back on the record from January and cause number 2021-CR0667, State of Texas versus Jeremy Michael Tapia, could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state. Defense. Pam Gonzalez for defense. And are you Mr. Tapia? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And so when was the UA completed? This morning, Judge. This morning? This morning. You know me so well. All right. The court found 9B true, and the state was requesting a termination unsatisfactorily. And I believe probation, you were in agreement with termination? Yes, Judge. All right. Is there anything either party wishes to state? No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor, just that he took your um, admonishments very seriously. He's working very hard to make sure that he came back in compliance. And I'm, I'm very proud of the job that he's doing right now, Judge. All right. Uh, the court will then will deny the motion and terminate unsat. Thank All you. Right. All right. Is there anything else? No, no Your Honor, may we be excused? All right. We can go off the record. So, Mr. Tapia. Yes. You need to make sure you do better because otherwise you could end up in a court. Don't 
Don't get happy because you're not going to prison or anything of that nature. Continue on with what you've been doing to remain remain clean and sober. Yes, for my and even though you're no longer on probation here, if there's a, ever an issue that pops up or you're trying to get services for treatment and they're not giving you the treatment or you are lost, you can always come back in the 187. Okay. All right. Thank you for dressing appropriately for court and being clean and sober. Appreciate it. All right. Have a great day. You too. Thank you. You're welcome. Fabian Ramirez. Hello. Um, I'm just got appointed to Mr. Ramirez. All right. Um, where is he? He's, he's in custody. Oh, you all need to ask for them to be brought out. No problem. I'd already I had a meeting with them just Friday of last week, so I didn't think to ask them to be brought out. Yes. Apologies. Oh, no problem. And Anna. Yes. I don't know if you all are on this case or not. They didn't put the charge in their motion. But I'm assuming whoever's on it, they will have no objection. Oh, thank you. No objection, Judge. Okay, thank you. And I know so if you could call these two files for me. Terrell Goodry. Gidry, where's his attorney? Who's the attorney on Terrell Gidry? Oh. <laughs> Carl Gidry. That's okay. Let me ask the question. That's okay. I understand. All right. So this is family violence. Where are we on discovery? We should be in good order on discovery, Judge. I think so, Your Honor. I think most of the discovery I've downloaded, most of it. Still need to review some of the video. The only question I had was a video apparently taken by someone else that was in the body cam. Was that included in that? It's in the police report. It should be. That. I think it's within like just officers in the report. But okay. okay. I didn't notice that in the police report. Yeah. All right, Ms. Ferguson on Gidry. Yes, Give me a 30 day reset for discovery. And at that time, states you'll need to be prepared to tender an offer. Okay. Thank you, Judge. Okay. All right. April 1st. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Okay. Thank you. you got a key card. Here, then we'll take your reset form. <laughs> Anthony.
Anthony Warrington. And this is Criminal Trial Division. Yes, Your Honor. Where are we on discovery? All the discovery should be there. It's pretty, pretty simple. The okay. ones too that I, that I noticed on the on video description. There's just a few videos and then the reports. So have you received an offer or no? Yes, I have. I was given an offer this morning. It's at the rate of my client. Uh, All right, Mr. He does have one issue. He's, he's been in, uh, he was here more than 90 days before he's indicted. So he's filed a motion, but I can file a writ too, whatever the court wants to do to take All right. Well, if there's a motion that needs to be heard with bond issues, uh, just get a reset from Ms. Ferguson with Judge Nahara and he'll hear that. And if you want to adopt your client's motion for that, you're more than welcome to adopt it or either you can file your own motion. All right. Yeah. So, uh, Ms. Ferguson, Mr. Warrington, how old are you? 48. 48. All right, Ms. Ferguson, if we can bring this back in two weeks for a plea deadline date. Yes, I think March 12th. All right. March 12th will be your plea deadline date. So, Mr. War Warrington, on March 12th, you need to let the court know whether or not you're accepting the state's offer. And then with regards to your motion for a bond, that will be heard by Judge Nahara. Right. It's not a motion, it's a motion for a uh, uh, writ for habeas corpus. That's, that's, that's what it, yeah, it okay. is. All right. All right. That's what it is in layman's term. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. In legal right. terms, it's a writ. Yeah, that's right. Right. Okay. okay. This is the motion. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, Mr. Worthington. Right. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah. And counsel, if you'll talk to Ms. Ferguson, who knows, maybe they'll be able to hear that today. Okay. Well, still got one of the courts I'm waiting on. That's a problem. Fabian Ramirez. Is he out? Yeah. Okay. Jose Lopez. Lopez. Who's the attorney on Jose Lopez? All right. We'll take up the case with interpreter. That is Marcelino Padilla. Good morning. All right, hi, and hi. And I know we had someone for him who speaks Spanish Correct. to be on the case as well. Yep. All right. We are currently in a jury trial, and I'm assuming that you need a chance to get caught up, counsel. No, Judge, we're ready. Oh, we're, ready we're ready? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see where this trial takes us. Well, we're especially set, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just, just to remind the court. No, we're not. Yes, we are. You weren't here. Okay. Here's the thing. Uh, in this court, I technically don't do special settings, but what we will do, we're going to see where this jury trial takes us. All right. So we can't start on this trial yet because I have a jury out deliberating with family violence. So we'll see where that takes us. Right now, where it's taking us is we cannot start trial on this case now because I have a jury out deliberating. All right, so that's where we are. Um, do we wait or what do we do or another day? Or what, what we're gonna happen? do is we'll see where this jury trial takes us. And since your client is cut in custody, is your client anticipating on bonding out? No, you're on that side. All right, so this is what we'll do then. Ms. Ferguson, can you get with the state and the defense to see what date works for them. A tentative date, because we may be able to take this up depending on what happens with this jury. So just as a tentative date, so everyone will have that. And if we need to call you back, I'll give you more than ample time. I won't call you back at let's say two and say, you need to be here by 
It will be the next day and not this day, okay? We'll be ready anytime this week, John. All right, thank you. So uh, if you all will confer with them on another tentative date, but you may get called back today. Yes, Ron. Right. Thank you, good. Thank you so much for coming down. All right. And then Norma, once they have a date, let me know. Joshua Kilgore. Good morning. How's it going? Pretty good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. It's uh, a little bit hectic today, but the staff will tell me I put that into the universe. So, but it happens. Everybody's got to have uh, three hours worth of conversations in 30 minutes. So there you so. go. All right. So this is a first setting. Where are we on discovery? Uh, I do believe we have received uh, uh, most of the discovery. I don't know of any items out there that we are still missing. Uh, if anything comes up, I'll, of course, uh, bring it to your attention in the DA's office as quickly as possible. There are also some materials that we provided to the DA's office today, um, and uh, they, they could be dispositive if they work out one way or another. Uh, the only other open thing I would say, Your Honors, we, we are asking for a reset date of about 60 days. Mr. Kilgore also has an open issue in Comal, and that would give us time for have, having a bench down there, hopefully deal with that. And what is the open matter in Kamal? I believe there's a possession of a controlled substance. Oh, well. What level of felony? Oh. Uh, Do we know? It, it, this, the second degree here would, would be the most serious charge he's faced. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recall this. Uh, state is 30 days enough time? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So I'm going to recall this in 30 days. That's for everybody to look over their discovery. And then... Uh, State at that time, will you be prepared to make an offer? I believe we'll be able to judge. All right, Ms. Ferguson, 30 day reset on Cleo Gore. All right, April 1st. Yeah. Is there anything else? That will do it. All right, thank you. You're excused. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. That may I be excused, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. Dana Waters. All right, you were late for court. Do not be late again, you understand? Yes, and I'm gonna give you a slight pass because this is your first setting here. So next time there should be no excuses. You know where the courtroom is located, correct? Yes, ma'am. We start at nine. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, where are we on discovery? So I would say that discovery is complete at this point. This is the first trial setting. We will be filing a motion to suppress. All right. So has the state tendered an offer? No, not at this time. Okay. All right, Ms. Ferguson. Yes, ma'am. On this case, and your motion to suppress, is it based on a search warrant or something else? It's going to be based on the legality of the search. All right. So, uh, Ms. Ferguson, can you put this on what date for a hearing on the motion to suppress? And you say this will be dispositive? Yes. I shouldn't take that long if it's a search warrant. There's no search warrant. All right. Then what is it based upon? Is it based upon a stop or something else? Yes. Oh, well, this will have to be carried with trial. Okay. Yes. Got it. All right. So state, you did tender an offer or no? No, ma'am. All right. So Ms. Ferguson, recall this for March 18th. Yes, and state an offer will be due at that time. And then after that, we'll put it on the trial docket. All right. All right. Thank you. Once you sign the reset form, you're excused. Okay. Thank All right. You. Thank you.
Fabian Ramirez. Who's the attorney for Fabian? Yes, Your Honor. He's oh, here. He's here. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Have you had a chance to speak with him? Yes, we okay. spoke. Um, you on this so, side? Hey, honey, uh, we have spoken. Um, I, like I said before, Your Honor, I do need uh, some digital time to go to the discovery. Uh, the state and I have I've received phone calls from the complainant. I believe the state needs to get a hold of him as well. Um, he's related to me that he does not want to move forward with the case. I don't believe the state has had the opportunity to get a hold of him. Uh, this is an older, um, older case. Uh, okay. Uh, my client and uh, the state and I have also conferred and I believe if, if the court will allow us, I guess, to move forward with a, an agreed bond uh, uh, reduction. Oh, um, y'all will need to file the motion and then Judge Nahara will hear the bond issue. Okay. All right. Ms. Ferguson, recall this uh, for 30 days, please. Yes, ma'am. I think April 1st. All right, we're going to come back on April 1st. So April 1st, state, be prepared to tender an offer. Yes, Judge. Is there anything else? Oh, yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, Norma, do they have a setting on Marciliano Padilla? They're in the back discussing. All right, please. thank you. Blas Hernandez? His attorney was here earlier, Judge Alex no. Oh, no, his attorney is, is Warren Wolf now. Oh, okay. So Warren Wolf has been retained. Could you? They're not ready on that one. Jose Lopez? Judge, I think that was the motion for continuing. Yes, I want to speak with the state about that. So on this case, Norma, it is family violence, and it's with Gary Chirac. It's set for trial, but he is he has medical procedures on March 5th. So if we can move this to another date where family violence has their trial schedule. All right, April ninth. And is he in custody? Do we know? Uh, yes, it's 2023-CR-9778. Yes, yeah, All right. You're going to do April 9th, correct? Yes, April 9th. And uh, could you order him for tomorrow so he can know the reason why his case is reset? Yes, please. All right. All right, so what date have y'all decided on? Judge, um, I, I'd like to do it Wednesday, um, but I have a federal case in Del Rio. No, 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 just give me a date. The date that you all are picking is a tentative date. Of course, if we come back, then you will be in trial. I don't know how you're going to handle well, Del Rio. Trial, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so. Um, March uh, 4th, I guess, is if we're not going to do it this week. All right, so I'll put you all down for March 4th. Yes, Your Honor. And we'll see what happens with the trial. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. All right, is there anything else? Not right, right now, y'all. So All right. We're not coming back until March 4th, right, Judge? Monday. Monday, March 4th. But March 4th is not technically when we do jury selection, but if you all are here and everybody wants to select jury on that day, we'll do that. Yes, Your Honor. All right. Actually, and if you'll let your see. client know. Yes, Judge. All right, yes. thank you. And is there anything else that we need to take up? It depends on whatever the state files. 
um, we anticipate something, but they haven't filed it yet. So if, well, if what are do, you all filing? Well, we had a conversation with the complainant's grandmother a week or two ago, and we, we've sent everything to defense in terms of our the nature of our conversations, but we're going to be filing a, a 3837 notice relatively soon. We just, we had the back-to-backs, so we don't have everyone's contact information for the five other people that we intend to potentially have as state's witnesses. They're out of state, and we believe some of the stuff in translation may have been lost with the grandmother, but... That is, in full candor, what we've discussed with defense in terms of the 3837 filing. All right. Well, when are you, you all are ready to hear, have emotions here and all that. Of course, I'm available to hear it. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good Thanks, one. Sir. Who's here on Christina Rios? All right. Court is calling 2024-CR-0311, State of Texas versus Christina Rios. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Defense. Your Honor, good morning. Frankie Sandoval on behalf of Ms. Rios. And are you Ms. Rios? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have you received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Is this going to be an application or no? No, Your Honor. This is a um, to-do offer. All right. Uh, probation, no application. Ms. Rios, I'm going to show you what's entitled True Bill of Indictment. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, do you waive the reading of the indictment? Your Honor, that we do. All right. Off the record for a moment, Counsel. He needs to be moved down to that end if you wish to speak with him. And please whisper. We're back on the record. State, are you proceeding on the indictment as presented? Uh, no, Your Honor, we're waiving the answer. No objection, Judge. Ms. Rios, I'm showing you what's entitled court admonishments and defendants waivers and affidavit of admonitions. Did you review that with your attorney? Did yes. you understand it? Yes. Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes. Did you understand you're charged with the offense of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon? That's a second degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes. If you have a plea with the state, the court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. Did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, has your client been able to provide you with any defenses? She has, Judge. Do you believe she has a rational as well as a factual understanding of the charges against her? In my opinion, she does, Your Honor. Do you believe she's currently competent and was legally sane at the time of the offense? My opinion, yes, Judge. Ms. Rios, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter the plea? No, Your Honor. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial? Showing you the plea bargain page. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at seven years in the prison. There is an affirmative finding of deadly weapon and there are no applications. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense, is that the plea? It is our understanding, Judge. State, is that the plea? It is, Your Honor. Showing you the waiver of appeal paragraph. Did you review that paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, are there any such motions? There are not in this case, Judge. Then to the offense as charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. State, any evidence? Yes, Your Honor. No objection, Judge. All right. State, you may continue to confer. Okay. Showing you what's entitled wavering consent to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Did you review that document with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call and the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. 
Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses, statements, and police reports, but most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, sir. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept in the evidence states exhibits one in attachments and review the same. Yes, sir. All right, after reviewing states exhibits one in attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Your Honor, in the interest of justice, uh, we would uh, ask that the court consider moving forward with sentencing today. Ms. Rios is interested in beginning the process of putting this whole matter behind it. All right. The court, uh, Ms. Rios has some concerns or questions. All right. Is there, do you have some type of mental diagnosis in your past? What's going on with you? Uh, yes. All right now, I'm on uh, Zyprexan Zola. For what? for uh, like anxiety anxiety and uh, schizophrenia. Okay, all right. When you're released from prison, do you have someone who, a case manager or someone who can help you stay on your medications? Yes. All right, all right, I'm gonna follow your agreement. I'm gonna find you guilty. There's an affirmative finding of deadly weapon sentence you to seven years in the prison. I'll give you credit for any time served. There's to be no contact with the complainant in the case. I'm going to request for you the therapeutic mental health unit. I can request it, but you'll have to request it too. Otherwise they won't place you in it. It doesn't increase the length of time you're in custody, but it will help you keep on track with your mental health issues. You understand? Okay. Is there anything else with regards to sentencing? No, Your Honor. I'm going to show you what's entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? And did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I saw that your plea bargain agreement, and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we can go off the record. You're going to have to make sure you stay on your medications because if you come back to another felony court, depending on the nature of the offense, your minimum sentence is going to be 25 years. You understand? Yeah. All right, good luck to you. Thank you. You're Here's, welcome. May we be excused, Judge? Yes, thank, thank you. you. All right, anyone else ready? Good job. Yes. Can I see the file on Blas Hernandez? Blas Hernandez, come down. All right. Where are we on this case with discovery? I uh, went over with the state, and there's a question of two, two or three other charges. Judge, he has some unindicted cases that uh, I would like to get reviewed by the intake folks. So I'm, I'm going to email them if we could have a, a reset to uh, to get those cases reviewed to see if there's something we could offer to resolve all the cases at once, Judge. All right, Ms. Ferguson, I need a 30-day reset on Blas Hernandez. All right, we'll be back on April 1st, Mr. Hernandez. If your attorney wants you back sooner because they've discovered things, then you can come back sooner. You understand? Judge, one other, one other thing, uh, because of circumstances in this family, uh, we're asking the court to consider uh, having him interviewed for a PR bond. Uh, All right. His, he was in charge of uh, his child between him and his mother. And his mother is in the hospital now. Uh, so he needs to. All right. Well, Child Protective Services may end up being called. You probably should not be in charge of your child if you have these cases. You understand? All right, so um, he can be interviewed for a PR bond. Thank you. All right, thank you. No, that's a different one. That's uh, Salas. Jerry Banda. Good morning, Judge, we're present. All right, Mr. Banda, come down. All right, where are we on discovery? I believe we have discovery. Um, uh, the state has 
has some victims they need to contact in this case before they convey us an offer. We have had some preliminary plea discussions. I think they need to run that by the <clears throat> plaintiffs. All right, Ms. Ferguson. Yes, Recall this in one month. State you'll need to be prepared to make an offer at that time. I'm sorry, what? April All right, April 2nd. Thank you, Ron. All right, is there anything else? No, Judge. All right, thank you. Jenny Joe Webb. Okay. All right, everyone, uh, Mr. Webb is going to be recalled for March 4th for medical reasons. Webb, Judge? Yes. March 4th, right, Judge? Yes. All right, thank you. All right, who wants to speak with me? What's your name? Ricky Hughes. Ricky Hughes, yes. you can have a Okay. You can come forward. No. Hello. You want to speak to me concerning something? Yes, my son. Oh, I love your TikTok. Oh, I'm not on TikTok, but okay. <laughs> um, my son had a pending case. It was a misdemeanor. They dismissed it and enhanced it. He came to court the other day and they indicted him to enhance it. And he's be now being held without bond on that. All right. Court. So this is what you need to do. Uh, do you have his attorney's phone number? His attorney doesn't. Who's his attorney? Um, Leland McRae or something. All right. So I can tell you that Mr. McRae was in here. Uh, just have a seat. I'm going to have them pull a file and we'll see what information I have for you. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Could you pull the file on Hughes? I don't know. What is Hughes' first name, please? Matthew, Matthew Hughes? Yes, All right. If you could pull Matthew Hughes, please. All right, uh, Deputy Laura, these are the people who are coming back on page 15. Aldo Salas. Uh, the other person, I'm going to recall that this afternoon. He's on bond, though. It's Renee Torres. Then on page 23. Caroline, Robert Caroline. Oh, we went to go get them. They're here. Oh, they're here. Okay, thank you. Oh, those are the only ones that are on hold. So, Dan, could I see the file on Daniel Martinez, Michael Castro? That's a violation report. And Vern Staten is a violation report. But he may have a case file. And Mr. Hughes has said until March 21st. Okay. This file needs to go with Judge Jarrett. All right, so everyone, we're going to take our
noon break, we're just waiting for Caroline. And after Caroline, we'll take the noon break. Are we from the pick over here, Judge, in the next? Yes. Okay, at one thirty. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Judge. And they, they are making the courtroom available for us. Ooh, it's you. nice when you have great next door neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> Did you request him Salas? Uh, Salas, yes. He's out here. He His attorney requested him to be out here, but then the attorney discovered that he had retained Warren Wolf. Oh. So we're waiting for Mr. Wolf. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. The person who you're here for your son, come forward, sir. All right. So, Mr. Hughes, this case is coming back on March 21st. That's when it's set. Your son is in adult court, so his attorney doesn't necessarily have to speak with you. I'm, I'm trying to get him... I'm trying to, he's finally getting his stuff together and mm -hmm. he has a good job working for Toyota. Mm -hmm. And with him being remanded without bond, he's going to lose his job. Okay. All right. So what we'll do is we'll see if we can get in touch, see if you can get in touch with Mr. McCray. All right. And then we'll have it set and it can be set with me and I'll hear whatever motion he files. All right. Yes, sir. That's the best I can do for you because it's really the attorney that I should be speaking to, but I understand your concerned parent. I want him, he's finally getting his head where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And this, and if he loses his job, then, uh, all right. So yes, talk with Mr. McCray. Uh, check with the coordinator to make sure you have the correct number for Mr. McCray. All right, because sometimes it doesn't happen like, electronically. Because I've been looking them up online and oh, I can't oh. find any of them. All right, just ask uh, the coordinator, just have a seat and she'll get with you and we'll give you his number. Okay, because I used we used to use uh, uh, Rusty, Ronald Geyer, mm -hmm. but he retired. Oh yes, Rusty yeah. is now in New York. Rusty, well, yeah, I just talked to him on the way over here. Yes. He's the one that told me to come over here. Okay. Yeah, Rusty was like, we'll I'll tell Rusty I said hi and I hope he's enjoying New York. Yeah, he's loving everything. Okay. Thank you, Yola. You're welcome. Oh, just have a seat. And then uh, she'll call you up and see if we can't find his number for you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right. And has Robert Caroline been brought out? He's out here, Your all right. So what is the issue with Caroline? Caroline, come down. So no. Uh, I'll wait for Mrs. Caroline. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, so there's no issue here. Last time we met, we was just uh, with the VA and being a prisoner, of course, with the, with the court's concerns of not letting him out. I was not able to get the VA. Yes. Today, however, um, I tried to get one of my VJOs here. We're working with a solution. We're actually going to put him on the phone with one of our VJOs and get the information that we need because, unfortunately, they're stuck over on the other side of town doing, doing a homeless event, mm -hmm. and we're going to try to work this out with the court. So what I asked for today, but while we're working with your uh, deputies, is we're either going to bring him in the back. We'll be with them during the assessment. Or if no one's going to be here, we can use the jury box, whatever. You do All right. So is that going to be done today? Yes, ma'am. We'll be done today. We're going to staff them on Thursday. And I should be able to come back around with you on Friday and let you know what's going to happen. All right. So, Ms. Ferguson, on this case, can we recall, recall this uh, for the first Monday in March? I think that's the fourth. Yes. Yes, ma'am. All right. And I just... It looks like a little piece of metal you're on. It looks like uh, it's kind it's of. It's made in the USA. Yeah, so it's like it looks like a new. I didn't mean it by any disrespect. Oh, I don't. No, no, no. Here's the thing. I don't take it as disrespect, no, no. but I always want to know what's going on. Yes, ma'am. All right. So, mm -hmm. is that permanent? No, ma'am. I could take it out. Oh no, 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 no. I just was curious because oh. usually at the jail they say that's contraband or something, and you're not supposed to have it. Something trouble. I just didn't get rid of it. No, am I? Am I? 
Deputy Laura, am I right on that? I judge you. Yeah. Usually they're making things to make earrings. That's not usually not allowed at the jail. No. I found yeah. it like this, ma'am. Nobody made it or anything. I just found it like that and just popped it out. Oh. Just okay. Yeah, it's I considered. I, think, forgot, I forgot it was there probably. Even. No, I could be very wrong, but I think that's considered contraband mm -hmm. if it's not issued. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then what's up with the LV you're designing? No, I did just when my shirt came. Oh, it came that way. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right. You, well, you know, at the jail, they may need to change that because people think certain things with the LV symbol. I have no idea what it means now. Okay. All right. I mean, I worked with the kids when I got in the Marine Corps for two and a half years. There's no, no, no. I understand. But I'm letting you know that LV really means... Stop gang violence. And I, that's what I was hoping to go back that trip. Well, that's what that LV means. So you may want to get a new top so that people at the jail won't inmates at the jail won't assume things. All right, so we're gonna come back on March 3rd. I'm still here, hang in the Marine Corps. Okay, oh, well, thank you so much for your service. All right, so we'll be back on March 3rd, okay? Yes, yes ma'am. Sorry, March 4th. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, thank you. All right, thank you. And Deputy Lord, if you can keep a hold on him. Yes. All right, and then, oh, I'm sorry, yes. My apologies, Your Honor, may I approach real fast? Yes. Yes. Awesome. Okay, awesome. Okay, thank you so much. All right, Mr. Hughes. We're going to bring your son over on Wednesday. Okay? Yes, sir. All right, we'll bring him on Wednesday. Thank you. Wednesday? Yeah, I mean, that's the note you passed me. No, no. It's for it's for uh, McRae, not for him. Mr. Hughes, you can oh, I'm sorry. This is for somebody different. Can we bring my son Wednesday? No, no. Let me just see. <laughs> just one second. All right, McRae, where's the files? Let me see. I gave you all the files, Coach. Just one second. I don't have a file for. Oh, here we are. Yes, Mr. McRae, come forward. All right, Wednesday would not be best because they have a jury trial here. I mean, we'll be in jury trial on a murder case. Okay, well, Thursday. Thursday? We're just trying to get a pretty done judge. All right. Do y'all want to do it today or no? No, I can't do it. I have a prior commitment this afternoon. All right. So this week is not going to be good. I mean, this, this week is not good. We're in trial. Okay, well, the next week. <clears throat> That Monday, the fourth, will you be able to do it? When? The fourth, yeah. The Monday. That's fine. Okay. All right, we'll recall. Okay. March 4th. All right, change here. You're welcome. Okay, that's it? Yep, that's Thank it. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay, Mr. McCray, I'll see you March 4th, okay? All right, all right, okay, take care. What page is Mr. McCray on? He's on page 16 at the bottom. All right, so the people who are coming back, <laughs> uh, Rudu Pardo, and that's gonna be next door. Aldo Salas on page 15. Renee Torres. Is Renee Torres in Devil's Custody? Now there's no notation that he's in federal custody. So that's coming back at 1.30. Yeah. All right, I don't know why it's listed nowhere on the docket sheet. Have you had other two other pending MTRs, Judge? Yeah, last week, 
we were supposed to do two hours last week and they notified us in the custody last week. All right, who is? Oh, it's supposed to be for March 7th. Why is he here today? All right, that's supposed to be recalled for March 7th. There you go. So then we have Solace is coming back. And then we have Daniel Martinez, Michael Castro, and Baron Staten. All right. Everybody has an emergency, but then when you try to solve their problems, oh, I can't come back this afternoon. Well, what are we supposed to do with that? All right, we'll be back at 